so in season six on the Blu-rays of Doctor Who, obviously, um, there is uh, five special episodes collectively known as The Knight and the Doctor, and they're just little mini skits that help explain away a certain amount of things. There is Bad Night, Good Night, which are is basically Amy confronting the Doctor about some of the sort of paradoxes that have been happening, and it explains away some of that. There's Good Night, um, there's First Night and Last Night, which sort of explains a bit more about River Song and the Doctor and their relationship. And then there's another one, which I can't remember the name of because it wasn't very exciting, and it's basically Craig from, it's just before closing time, the closing time episode, and is Craig freaking out that he's got to look after his baby. Um, and it was a bit pointless. So... Yeah, I'm going, obviously, I'm going to discuss these. They are very good. Go and watch them, or find them, or whatever. But, basically, before we go any further... This is your spoiler warning. Showing off toys, it's fine. Right, um, so, Bad Night, Good Night. The first episode hasn't got a lot in it that's terribly important to speak about, but it does, it's the first time they sort of turn around and go... During the night, whilst Amy and Rory are asleep, they have... The Doctor goes off on adventures with Riversong. And that's basically the important thing about the first one. Apart from that, it's just really a, a comedy sketch, and it's let's have the Doctor running about being weird. And it does have some quite good jokes in it. Um, but nothing really important to say here. The second app's where it gets into the meat of things. Now, Amy has figured out that the Doctor's getting up and doing all of this, and she confronts him about basically the state of her mind and the fact that she can't remember, that, that she can remember sort of having multiple lives all in parallel. So, like, she has, remembers growing up without parents, and then she remembers growing up with parents. And it's, she should, this should drive her insane, yet yeah, it's okay, it's not doing her any problems. Um, same with Rory, um, with being a Roman. And basically the Doctor turns around and is like, no, this is what time does, it's continually getting rewritten. Everyone remembers, like, a holiday they can't have been on or meet someone for the first time they've been there. And, and it feels like you've known them forever. Um that's what happens. And it's quite a nice explanation for this, that you can have these memories there and it'd be okay. And it's more the fact that most people wouldn't really remember the second one or it would just feel like a bad dream or something. But because Amy's been there when time got rewritten, she can remember, she knows that it's a memory and not an illusion and not a, her mind playing tricks on her. Um, and that that's, you know, and that it's okay in that, that people are used to this. They also explain away Rory's character a bit better. I think I've said in one of my other things, I wasn't keen on the idea that he's a Roman and they say he can remember, yet why is he not more badass? Um, and they basically turn around and go, no, he can't really remember. It's just that he sometimes has flashbacks and they're about a second long and you'll just find him staring into space. But then when he snaps out of it, he forgets it again. Um, and I quite liked that explanation. Not the way I would have taken it, but I'm not writing the script, so tough titties to me. It works. It's fine. The only thing they don't explain, but I hope they explain in the next season when it hurries up and turns up, is the ending of season six with the whole idea of Amy can remember being stuck in Paradox Universe where time's all mashed together. When did she get this memory? Was it when... Because it can't have been when the Doctor died in front of her because she's had a whole adventure trying to stop it happening. Um, yeah. Dunno, not sure of that. That's quite confusing. I'm assuming it's at the end of her time, but how did she get roped into it, etc. That's confused me a lot. That one's really peculiar. Um, 
But the only other thing to say about the Good Night, Bad Night um, apps is I quite like there was a joke at the end that made me that 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 really kicked out to me really, um, which is that basically the doctor takes Amy to a fun fair at the end of the app and goes, you know, oh I don't like the ghost trains. Do you mind if I hold your hand? Um, and if you watch my Disney um, vlogs, you'll know that I'm not keen on ghost trains either. So the fact that he says this is just like yes, yes. Even the doctor's scared of them, so I'm allowed to be. Um, random thing but just made really so sort of, I made me feel good um, and that's the first two episodes and what they confront the second two apps are first night and last night and basically runs on the idea of um, River Song getting picked up by the doctor to um, for the first time from the storm cage and he explains you have the diary you use it to keep in sync um they then have a silly skit of them running up where where multiple rivers end up in the tardis and they're all keep popping out at different times going are you talking to someone no dear are you talking to someone no dear uh, etc but the big thing it, this one does is the fact that basically um the, one of the rivers that turns up, a doctor comes in afterwards going, wrong TARDIS, wrong TARDIS, we're parked round back. And it is revealed that this is the time that this doctor and river are the ones going off for the last time. This is River's final meeting with the doctor before he gives her the sonic screwdriver to go and meet David Tennant and die basically um and that's good i like that because i was a bit confused with the character like could she turn up after matt smith could she turn up with the next actor playing the doctor who knows she could that could be a continual character for all i know um but no they write it in you know no it's matt smith who gives her the sonic so it is highly unlikely we're going to get her with anyone else, but we've got that bit, which is excellent. Um, yeah, so that's the whole key bit of that, that River Song is in canon for Matt Smith only, and then they'll piss off and get on, and, and so she'll die at the end of Matt Smith's um, arc. Sorry, I'm losing my train of thought here. So those, that's that one, and that's the big thing there. That, that one explains that River Song is very much Matt Smith's companion, and that's the end of it. And then, as I say, the last one, as I can't even remember the name of it, because it's just about Craig being humorous. And it didn't really make sense to me, to be honest. It's him freaking out that he's got to look after his own son. And it made sense in the in 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 the episode because he's going, you know, look, I can look after the kid. I'm fine. I'm, I can't look after him. I, it, it just cries. I don't know what to do. But it's still his son, and the way this, but with the way the ep this mini short goes, he's just. Like, I've got to look after my son. I don't know what to do with him. I don't know how to hold him, and it's just like. No, I can understand you after half a day starting to freak out and being like, no, no, I can look after him for an evening, but not two days. I don't know enough. I'm not confident enough. But being scared to even touch your own child is a bit, come on, guys, it's being a bit too silly really was my opinion on that one so yeah those are those extra ones um i'd love to hear anyone else's comments uh doobly do down below um video responses whatever please uh yeah i'll see you all next time i'll catch you later